Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This, I don't know why it seems dark. I don't have one of my lights on, but I don't feel like cutting it on either. But I think y'all can see me, so it's fine. But hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta Season 2, Episode 7. I don't like growing up hip hop Atlanta anymore. I get bored, okay? I think I just burped. I'm sorry. Y'all not drink water before everything and it makes me whatever. Um, the microphone makes y'all hear everything and it's kind of crazy. But anyway, I feel like growing up hip hop Atlanta just makes us miss the growing up hip hop LA season. I just think all these storylines plot lines 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 are lies 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 and it just makes me miss you know angela simmons and you know Lil romeo and you know christiana is it christiana no christiania you know what i'm saying it just makes me miss those people and you know and, and, and dame dash son booby and even dame dash monkey self you know what i'm saying peppa and her little weird little daughter egypt who I still think she can't get a good weed going on. But Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta, to me, does nothing for the Growing Up Hip Hop series. I mean, I'm waiting for Growing Up Hip Hop New York. I'm thinking maybe they're going to add some other cast. But I am bored with Regine. I am bored with Zanique. Bow Wow is boring, but funny, because when I see him in the studio talking about all these songs, I be like, what songs, bruh? We heard no songs, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Um, J JD's daughter, Sh Zana uh, Sanaya, is boring. And her, you know, child-bait-ass high school boyfriend is boring. I mean, the whole thing is boring. I re Even Brandon is boring. Well, I just don't like Brandon. But, you know, I just feel like... I don't know if the production is lazy on here or what the fuck is going on, but I like throughout the episode, I be like dozing off, like literally, cause it's one fifty one in the morning here in Michigan, and I'm a night owl. Y'all know I'm up to like four a.m. every day because I'm reviewing different stuff or whatever, and I usually have multiple things to review in one night. But I be dozing off, like I literally dozed off today when JD was talking to his daughter. And I was just like, you know what? I don't care because I know they wasn't saying much of anything. You know, the episode starts off. You know, Brad and the dad is still talking. They, you know what? Brad is entertaining. I like the Brad. I feel like that's why they added her because she brings something to the table. Even though, you know, it's a little bit staged. It's a little bit extra. I still feel like Brad is being her normal animated self. They're just kind of getting it on camera, and she is just doing whatever. I, I am entertained by Brad. So, you know, she's talking to Deb and basically saying, like, you need to put Brandon out because this is after Deb was talking to her about the interview that Brandon did. And my thing is, I don't give... I don't give a fuck. I don't get why Deb is so, oh, my God, I'm so distraught. You have known Brandon for four years girl give it up i mean and my thing is when she keeps saying like, i don't know what to do girl that brad was like put his ass out you know make him aware of the shit that he doing how you're not gonna tolerate it and you know deb acting like you know what am i supposed to do i don't know he lives with me because i don't see him girl we don't get no fucks we don't even like brandon you could put Brandon out on the 4th of July with some goddamn on Hot Pockets and Hot Rocks and a goddamn on 10th wheel can. We wouldn't care. Put his ass out with four bags of popcorn, two chicken nugget sandwiches, and then a the goddamn Pepsi. 
We won't care that he don't have nothing. We don't care because no one likes him. And you know, you have people you don't like and you still like kind of want to see them because you want to be aggravated by them. I don't even want to be aggravated by Brandon. I would not care if I did not talk about Brandon ever again in life. So I don't get why dad was just oh so distraught. When you, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. And Brandon has consistently showed Deb who he is. And I don't know if Deb is too old to see with her eyes. I don't know if she needs glasses. Um, and Brad is saying how, you know, Brandon keep fucking up. He keeps fucking up. He keep doing dumb stuff. And Deb keep acting like she don't see it. And she keep letting him off from it. You know, Deb saying like, you know, all my kids are grown. And, you know, it's a whole like little emptiness thing. You know, she brought up how Brandon was, you know, a big help to her when her son died. And I see, I don't know if Brandon took advantage of his dad because she said when he died, my son died, Brandon kind of came in and filled that void. So my thing is that Brandon see that Deb needed another child in her life. So he came in and played that role and got himself in that little void that she had. And now he is here and he know that in some way, he is connected to the loss of her son. So for her, it's hard to let go. And he's using that to his advantage. That's what I think is happening. Because when she said, you know, Brandon came at a time when my son died and he filled that void. I'm used to having children around me. I need kids in my life. So I adopt people to always have someone around me. Damn, you better adopt a damn dog. Adopt a dog, a goldfish, a cat, a shark, a tire. I don't care what. Hell, adopt a goddamn gone giraffe. Michael Jackson had one. Either way it go. Sometimes I say stuff like, bitch, what? Giraffe, bitch, what? Anywho, anywhere I go, Brandon is not going to be the fix to the void in your life with your son who passed away, um, unfortunately. There are other people you can get in your life besides a grown-ass adult man who don't respect you. And Brad is right when she telling Deb, it's your fault you in this mess because he keep fucking up and you keep letting it happen. You don't you don't do you don't do anything about it. So um what I did like is Brad did joke and say, Okay, you want kids around? I'm an adult, but I can be a kid. I can come over, I can live there, I can take up spaces, and I can even walk around in my drawers like a baby does. I mean, well, babies don't wear drawers, but Brad, if you wear drawers, okay. You know, next we see how Deb lets Brad in on, my back hurts, lets um, her in on the whole Johnny Bow Wow, breaking of the statue, fooling and tripping and stuff at the studio. And Brad not too happy about it. She's like, well, that's crazy. I can't believe Johnny would do that. You know, that's not Bow Wow Studio. That's Jermaine's studio. So her come acting a fool is crazy. Deb, that's your artist. I can't believe it. And she wasn't like going off on Deb. She was just surprised about what happened. You know, she does say to Deb, like, you should have took Johnny and left, which is absolutely true. But she also says to Deb, you know, you be letting people off the hook. And, you know, that's the issue. You know, when she brings up how Johnny broke a statue, <laughs> Brett like the fuck? She did what? Jenny gonna be pissed because them statues are collector's items. As we know, people who have studios and businesses and buildings and stuff like that, they do put collector's items and things that are expensive or that appraise for more and it's because it's a collector's item so if you in the damn studio knocking shit over breaking stuff people are gonna be pissed off so um she do say how both by wow and johnny was wrong brad does say that she says simply because bow should have knew better than to even allow what to happen in the studio which is true if you come to my parents' house and you fuss and fight, you got to get the fuck out. I'm not even allowing someone who I have issues with to be in my parents' place of home or business or whatever. Because I don't have time for you disrespecting my parents' place of place of whatever. So, you know, on some level, when Bao knew Johnny was crazy, he should have just got her ass up out of there and leave and just, just to leave it alone. And, you know, Brad then as dad well you know what what's johnny's punishment for what she did you know you let the people because basically you letting the monkeys run the zoo okay the monkeys all around throwing shit around and you rewarding the monkeys by not shooting them in the foot 
okay? You let them just go on about their business and just throw monkey shit all around and you don't care. So in a way, you letting Johnny run wild everywhere and just throw shit on people. And she has no consequence. So she's going to continue to be that same outrageous, crazy person because nothing happens when she do dumb shit. So Deb just says, you know, how she has to think about it, you know, because she don't know what to do. But Deb don't never know. You know what? People would say how good Deb was and how Deb had worked with A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And how she's been, built careers of one, two, three, four, five people or whatever. But in this series, Deb don't seem like she can control much and I'm like is that because of TV or is that the reason why the people that she usually had worked with only work with her up until a certain point because she can only get you so far to what she's able to handle think about it um Zanik and Regine they talking about having a house on a party I don't really care you know Zanik wants something small Regine wants something lit I hate the word lit. I'm so old. Um, and they're kind of talking about that a little bit. You know, Naya's saying who they can invite. Nika saying, like, you know, I want, like, ten people. Regina, like, no, nah, we should have more. She does bring up, you know, inviting just, like, the regular people. But she then even brings up inviting Steve J's daughter. And Zanika, like, do you really know these people or whatever? Yeah, I know them. They're cool. You know that? I know them. So, Zanik bring up, well, the last time I brought someone I knew, we see how that turned out. And that was when she brought Brandon, who Regina didn't know, and a whole bunch of shit went on. So, you know, they kind of both agree that they would not invite Brandon, but they'll probably invite everybody else. And it is what it is. Um, the Brad had a, a person in the studio, some artist, um, that she's working with. He, I liked him. You know what I'm saying? It gave me a, t a, a new age twist to vibe a little bit. I love the beat. You know, I love a good beat. I was like, okay, if this song was on the radio, I would listen to the whole thing. So, you know, that was cool. Um, we see Zanaya come in, JD's daughter, basically with her boyfriend, that little boy who I think is a kid. Um, and he meets the brat. The brat. Of course, Grilled Tom says how she's like the Mike Lowry character in Bad Boys when the guy came to pick up Martin, La Martin Lawrence's daughter and then he like, you know, ain't gonna be no fucking tonight. And that ain't what he said. What did, what did Mike Larry say? Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. That's what he said. <laughs> it was threatening with the look. It was really funny. But anywho, you know, she's the grill. And I'm like, what's your name? How old is you? How, how's your grades? You know, da, 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 da. He kind of said basically all the questions. So it was what it was. You know, she then says, you know, we going house, you know, house looking or whatever. We're going to look for a house. We're going to move in together. And the brat, not for it. I'm not for it either. I think she, tonight, is it Zanaya? I remember what it is and I forget. It's so stupid, but whatever. Um, I think she's too, she looks and acts young and immature. I do not think she's ready to live with a boy. I don't. Hell, the boy don't look old enough to live with nobody but his mama. The boy look 12. Okay, the boy look at my damn nephew's age. Okay, my, my, my nephew's 11. And girl, no. You know what I'm saying? You can't do it. So the brat, of course, like, oh, hell no. Y'all can't live together. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not ever. You know, it ain't going to happen. Not on this green earth. Not on nobody else's green earth. It ain't going down. And, you know, who cares? Oh, whatever. We see Toya, Regine's mom, come over to the house to basically see the girl's house. And this is where the fuckery and bullshit comes in. You know, Zanik and Renee sitting around the house or whatever. First of all, they couch is too little. Okay, it's not even a couch, it's a love seat. And I feel like when you are two people and you move in together, you don't have no little small love seat. You know who have love seats? Hotel rooms. Hotel suites have love seats. Get where I'm going here. You know, Toya get there, walk around. Oh my God, it's so clean, it's so clean. You don't see not no fork, no paper towel, no plates, no cups, no microwave, no toaster, no can opener. It ain't shit there, okay? First thing, oh, it's so nice, it's so neat. Oh, it's so nice, it's so neat. Uh, they show uh, Zanique's room. Oh, it's so spotless. They don't go all the way in there for Zanique. But then in Regine's room, they go into Regine's room. It's also clean. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe your room is, your room, your room is clean. However, what my eye spotted, all four of my eyes, is wasn't any clothes or shoes in the damn closet. I don't know about y'all. No one like Regine, 
would have a closet where you don't see nothing. You didn't see, it was two hangers hanging up and nothing. You didn't see no shoes, no clothes, no hats, no scarves, no nothing. In my closet right now, and I have four, one, two, three, four. I have three big closets, a big walk-in closet in my bedroom. In my closets, you have clothes, pants, shirts, shoes. I have pillows, I have luggage, I have bukus and bukus. I have stuff. Okay, I have stuff because I live here. I li I have stuff in my mama's house in her closet. Probably. I do. I do. I don't know what it is. So. But yeah, I'm like, so you mean to tell me that you and Zanik moved in together and y'all live here, but your closet is empty? No, it's all, it was literally two hangers. They, that's a damn Airbnb hotel. They don't live there. Okay, that was a hotel room. That is a two-bedroom hotel suite that they are renting for this show. You can't tell me not on there, another corner of this continent, of this country, of this good old Americas that they live there. You can't. No, 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 no. You cannot do that because it was nothing in the closet. It was like two pillows on the floor and two hangers. Ain't no way on God's green earth. Even if that girl house is spick and spam as a goddamn new house built today, she would have clothes and shoes in that closet. Why, you ask? Because she fucking lives there. Where does she get dressed? Where are her goddamn bras and panties, okay? Where's her headscarf? Where's her makeup? Where's her deodorant? Where is her toothbrush holder? Where's her combs and her brushes? Where's all that shit? They don't live there. Okay, you can't fucking fool me. That's a goddamn Airbnb hotel. Y'all do not live there. You're not fooling me. And that's why I said that couch and little love seat, that's how the front rooms of suites are. Okay, they live in a goddamn, that's a goddamn residence in. Okay, that's what it is. I'm like, bitch, it ain't no clothes in that closet. They don't live there. That's why they didn't go all the way into Zynique's room. Because that goddamn closet, probably empty too. Girl, fucking buy. I ain't got time for that bullshit. I'm talking about, you know, don't, you don't want to have a big house warmer party because you don't want people to know, know you live. They not going to know where they live at because they're going to a goddamn hotel room. That's why. Can't fucking fool me. <laughs> I was like, they try to trick us. Not me. Not Jay Lee. Not Jay Lee's Corner. No ma'am. No sir. No thank you. Um... Next thing we see, this little fake ass housewarming. Bow Wow come, you know, JD's daughter is there. We see Stevie J's daughter's here. Now, I wonder if they're going to try to finagle Stevie J's daughter into the next season of Love and Hip Hop. Anything to, to, to pick up this goddamn cast of boring ass people. Um, so it's like maybe 10 people or 10, 15 people there. You know, somebody brought a, a, a box of liquor. They had some Ciroc, you know, Regine. I can't drink. I don't watch y'all drink. Regine asses in there drinking like a goddamn fish. You can't tell me she wasn't. Um, then we hear knock, knock, knock at the door. Who at the door? Is it Santa Claus? Is it the Zoo Fairy? Nope. It's motherfucking Brandon. I'm like, well, who the fuck? What he doing here? You ain't friends with nobody there. What is you there for? Not only that, how did you know what was going on? Well, I'm pretty sure the hotel called him and told him what was going on. Anywho, you know, Regine ends up answering the door. She do not look happy, but she gladly takes the gift that he brought her. Um, she then get right to it, asking him and in that interview that he did if he was talking about her. And he says, huh? No, no one's talking about you. He then says, oh, you know what? I have to leave. You know, I have an emergency and, you know, I have to leave. And he's all right, y'all. See, what you come for? Tell me I want to come drop my gift off. You better Uber that damn gift through a goddamn on delivery service. Amazon deliver, Bed Bath & Beyond deliver. You can have anything else delivered. Because my thing is, if you have her address to go fucking visit, you have the address to mail a goddamn gift. Okay? And you can't fool me again. So he eagerly leaves and then JD daughter I'm gonna say this is Anaya but I don't I know that ain't it I can't ever remember the damn girl name Lord Jesus she go after Brandon because she like you know everybody else letting him off the hook I ain't trying to have that so she catch him outside before he before he get in that little ass Uber and she's like, so, you basically, you know, we know y'all watched the video. You know, you know they watched it because she asked you about it. Um, he's like, yeah, I know. Okay. And then, you know, she's like, 
you know we seen it because because he said I didn't know anybody watched it, and she said, well, you know he that's what it was. He when he said he didn't know anyone watched it. She then says, well, you know she watched it because she asked you about it. She said, not only that, your page isn't private, and you posted it on the page and you spoke about the cast. So of course, we would find out. You know, since it wasn't like you made it. You know, it wasn't a secret. You know, he acting like, oh, it ain't no big issue. You know, I don't know why they're tripping. He then says, you know, they need to just get over it because if you mad about it, you must, you must be mad because I can't outwork you. That's Brandon's problem. He just has this cocky ass attitude as if he's the end all and be all of everything. And he's not. I think he could possibly be good at doing whatever, but his attitude fucked up. And so no one likes you. You know, like to and Stanley, you know, bow all up in the house and they all talking or, what that, or whatever. And then he just kind of says, like, the reason Brandon is dealing with what he's dealing with is because it's his own fault. You know, he he has this arrogance. I can't believe Bow Wow said that because him of all people shouldn't be like, whatever. But, you know, he says how the shit that he does makes people feel a certain kind of way. He said, like, we all have family here. So he said something that we all, you know, didn't like. And so he going to have to deal with it. I'm like, you know, that's true. You know, I really do believe that. Um, we see a little scene where Dad meets up with Johnny. I thought it was some bullshit. Um, simply because, I mean, she says to Johnny, like, you know, you can't be out here wilding out. You know, you can't be letting people push your buttons to get you in the space to flip out. You know, you can't be doing that as an adult. Um... And then she did, then says, you know, I think you should meet with Bow Wow again. And I'm like, why? Like, for for what? You know, Johnny says, you know, I don't have anything else to, to say to him. You ain't had nothing to say to him in the first place. So I don't get why, one, you went to talk to him in the first place. And two, why they are trying to get y'all to talk again. I, it's, it's beyond me. You know, because, again, he did not want to talk to you in the first fucking place. So, you know, she basically tell her, like, you know, you can't be flipping out. I need to go talk to him and be calm and whatever. And, girl, bye. We see JD. Just, we see JD is finally back in Atlanta. And, you know, him and Brad meeting up and everything. And Brad basically being a snitch out in these streets. You know what I'm saying? She is telling him. Oh, yeah, you know, your daughter has a little friend that came by the studio, you know what I'm saying, some a little friend. He like, oh, like a, like a girl? And then she's she like, no, it was a boy. He's like, oh, hell. She's like, yeah, they kind of like dating, and then they want to kind of like, you know, he going to kind of help her look for a place in Miami. They're going to kind of like live together. And he was like, what? Oh, hell no, I ain't going down. Nope, it ain't happening. Let me go call her. But he like, I'm going to call her off camera. So he kind of walks away or whatever, and... She then mentions how they also need to talk to Bow Wow to go see Bow Wow's music or listen to his music. And, you know, J.D. is saying, like, you know, it is time for me to hear the music. But if Bow Wow don't want me to listen to it, you know, I'm going to let him do what he want to do. And if and when he falls on his face, he's going to have to handle it. I'm like, well, you know, it's what it is. We then see him and his daughter talk face to face, basically. This is where I fell asleep on it. You know, I, 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 I dozed off simply because I heard her saying, I have a boyfriend. We want to move together. And I hear him saying, he just want a free pass. He think it'll be easy. You know what I'm saying? He's dating my daughter. He's like, he, he could just be an opportunist. The boy in high school. <laughs> Okay, he not even a grown man. You know what I'm saying? He can't even vote yet. So, because this, he, girl, bye. Um, he said how, you know, he don't have a job. And she like, well, no, he is working on the clothing line. He takes photog- he takes pictures, so he's a photographer. He's 16, he's 17 years old. He's still a fucking kid. Like, girl, why are you trying to move in? I do feel like she, again, she's too young to be trying to live with a boy who was freshly out of high school. Oh, my God, it's just so stupid. And I like how JD not like... Oh, you really want to move in? Like, he like, no, no. He is saying no. He like, she needs to get her life together first. She needs to, like, get situated. And she ain't going to do that focusing on some boy. I completely agree. He says, like, you know what? I don't even want to meet the motherfucker. <laughs> because, you know, I don't feel like it's going to be anything serious. I don't think you should take the little boy serious. I think you're too young for all this. And again, as I said, I dozed off. Um, So he does say he does not want to meet him. But he did say, like, he can he can he wouldn't want to meet me. You know, if you think if you think it's bad how I'm talking to you and asking you questions, he can't handle me really grilling him. I agree with that. I do think 
JD in regards to his daughter would probably be like harsh. You know what I'm saying? And not be easy going, not like, oh, he's a little 17 year old lad. I think he's going to really go in as he should because it's his daughter. I believe it's his only child, too. So, you know, it's bound to happen. He, again, he sounded like I just wanted to get her life together and I don't want to meet him. And, you know, it was what it was. I really didn't care. We then see a small scene of Yana finally. She was in the episode a little bit here and there just because at one point, uh, Regine was texting her saying, um, are you coming to our housewarming party? And she's like, no, I'm having surgery, so I can't make it. So that's all that we really, really seen from her, from her earlier. Now we've seen her talk to her dad and she's basically saying, hey, dad, guess what? I'm getting my boobs reduced and I need you to be there for me. And her dad is still against the situation completely. Um, she does admit that Amy has came to her side. She said only because she made Amy run around with sandbags so she can feel how heavy bo boobs are heavy. Okay. And yes, I have, I have huge boobs. But yeah, she said she just had Amy run around with, you know, sandbags just to feel how much, you know, all of this is on her. So Amy kind of understood why she wanted the surgery. Her dad, on the other hand, is like, no, and it's basically because like he had a friend who went in for like foot surgery, you know, of course he had he had to be put to sleep and he never woke up. The guy ended up dying from surgery. So for his her father, he is just scared that, you know, she can go in for this simple procedure and she might not ever wake up. Now we know she's had the boob job. How do we know this? Because some of the confessionals they show her big ass boobs and then other confessionals it's just her from the neck up meaning she had a boob job and they're trying to keep it under wraps because you know it's supposed to be a surprise but she had a boob son it's fine and her dad is like you know i'm still not for it i don't really want you to do it and she's like well the surgery's tomorrow so i need you to, to support me he's like no i'm not paying for it she then says no i'm gonna take money on my 401k and i'm gonna pay for it myself I don't think people should take money out of 401k for surgery. However, because her boobs are so huge and she's so tiny and it is painful for her, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I, I get why she's doing it. And, you know, I'm like, girl, look, go get them goddamn titties cut down. Your daddy will be there when you get out of surgery. It is perfectly okay. And the last episode, the last episode, the end of the episode is just with Bow Wow and Johnny meeting up. Of course, it cuts off before anything good happens. You know, Bob was saying, like, he gonna be there. He don't want to talk. You know, Johnny pulls up and he pulls up. I still have no idea why they are conversating. I have no idea. You know, she's just saying stuff like, you know, why would you why would you call me a bitch? And, you know, do you have anything you want to say to me? And, um, you push my buttons and where did all that come from? And he is saying in his confession, like, you know, we all know how she can get she just kind of blow up on people and it is what it is. I'm just trying to not even get involved with it and just like, I'm just there to just let her talk. But she's more asking him stuff. And as she's asking him stuff, he does not even respond. And he just sitting like, like it's nothing. And then finally when she said, you know, why would you say that I set you up? You know, why would you call me a bitch? And no, she said, why would you call me a bitch? And then he says, you know, you set me up. You know what I'm saying? I was calm the whole time. Uh, you got all turned up. That wasn't me. It was you. And then it goes off. When is the growing up hip hop, the um, LA cast come back on? Hell, I'll even prefer to listen to Mary J. Blige, future ex-husband's goddamn daughter, that girl, Brianna, that Brianna chick, over anybody on growing up hip hop Atlanta. I just cannot take this show serious. Anywho, that was my review of growing up hip hop Atlanta. I hope you guys enjoyed my antics as much as I enjoyed giving you my antics. Don't forget that you can subscribe to my channel, hit the little notification button. You can also share my videos, like my videos, and as always, drop a comment down below. I do respond to comments. I don't respond to all comments because sometimes it can get a bit overwhelming, but I do read them and if I do, re I do respond. I do. I do. Okay, I, I, I do. It is what it is. It might take me a day or two to get to it and say whatever back, but I try to respond within like three days. So, um, have a great evening, people. You know, I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Peace and good night. <laughs>